First, I'll introduce myself. I'm Bob Schmid, WA9FBO is my call sign. I'm from Wisconsin originally, so I talk kind of fast. If I go too fast, slow me down, feel free to interrupt, ask questions, raise your hand. This is very informal today. Um, I became a ham in 1962 when I was 12 years old, and I've had a license ever since. That led to a degree in engineering, and I have spent time uh, working on motion control, aviation communications, uh, ham manufacturing uh, equipment, and, uh, and now laser diode drivers. So uh, uh, for those of you who are looking at a career, perhaps this will trigger something. Otherwise, it's a, it's a great hobby. And uh, this is going to be basically an introduction. The uh, technician class license is the first license class there is. We're going to introduce you to a whole lot of new words today and a little bit of theory as to why those words uh, mean something to us. If that triggers extra interest on your part and uh, enthusiasm, feel free to dig deeper and move up to a higher license class and enjoy the hobby to its fullest. Uh, we are going to teach you some theory, electronic theory, radio theory, rules and regulations, enough to pass the test, but this is a beginning point and hopefully you'll go on and uh, uh, learn more and uh, your curiosity will, will carry you a little further. It sounds like there's a, a lot of interest in emergency communications here. Um, not that it's going to affect basically what we teach, but it's good to know we have a couple of professionals here, electronics people, and a lot of folks that electronics is going to be something new. We aren't going to assume anything on the part of the students here. We're going to start at the beginning and as I said before, this is kind of an introductory course in electronics and radio theory and rules and regulations. The FCC is going to trust you with a license. They're going to assume that you will not intentionally interfere with other people or do bad things. So they want to make sure that you have some background as opposed to Citizens Band or Family Radio Services or other types of uh, exam free licenses. So let's get started. We'll be using slides provided by the American Radio Relay League. Uh, as a rule, I hate it when people read slides to me, and so I will try to not do too much of that. But the slides will keep me on track, and we won't forget anything important this way. Plus, there are questions in the slides very similar to the ones on the test. If you can pass those uh, questions, you'll, you'll do fine next, next week. Okay, we've done this. This is all pretty obvious stuff in the beginning. Welcome. These are the things we'll be talking about, which you will see very quickly. And of course, our goal is to get you a technician class license. Ham radio is governed by the FCC in this country. In other countries, it's typically uh, governed by their post office governmental agencies. And these are the reasons we're here. We want to encourage the advancement of art and science of radio. We want to help in the emergencies. We want trained radio operators on standby in case we uh, need you for uh, the citizenry. And uh, we also promote goodwill. Um, on some of the bands, you'll be able to talk around the world. And on some of the bands, you'll just talk to the next county. So you get to choose what sort of range and equipment you're going to have. These are the things that hams do, and I can vouch for that, having been a ham for 50-some years myself. Uh, my favorite thing is uh, building and designing equipment. There are people who spend their day communicating and couldn't really care less about uh, building antennas and building rigs. Uh, there's, a, there's something in it for everybody. Okay, as opposed to other radio services, um, you can operate with more power, you can build your own equipment, or you can buy it. Can't do that on the other services. Uh, you're given a lot of frequencies, and let me just prove something here on that. What did I do with my... This handy dandy little thing here. Worldwide spectrum allocations. Here are all the radio frequencies from DC to daylight, and it's divided into worldwide um, 
regions. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, every frequency is used by somebody. It's allocated to government, amateurs, broadcast, paging, cell phones, or something. And if you were to take a close look at this chart, you would see that hams have little slices all over the place. We can operate at very low frequencies, where you kind of rely on ground waves to communicate. We can operate on short wave frequencies. We can operate on VHF and UHF and SHF, uh, way up to microwaves. So we have little chunks, and the reason that we do is because the FCC realizes that it's a good thing to have those things on the slide. Trained operators, people who are experienced, people who can advance the state of the art. Um, and in exchange for a promise that we will help when called on, we are given chunks of spectrum all over the place, very valuable chunks of spectrum. And chunks of spectrum that other services look at uh, as if they would like to have them for themselves. So we need to keep ham radio strong and, and maintain our frequencies. Uh, you can operate a considerable amount of power compared to uh, other radio services. And, um, and it's free. We can use, and as far as ways of communicating, we can still use Morse code if you like to. There's voice, there's uh, television, there's all sorts of data modes. However, we do have some responsibilities. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't interfere with other services. This is a serious issue. Uh, go off band and you will probably be hearing from somebody. Um, we can put up a, a radio and an antenna that's fully capable of talking around the world, so we don't want any international incidents. We want to know uh, what it is that we can, uh, who we can talk to and who we can't. There are some countries on a, on a list that we are not allowed to communicate with. And of course, uh, the FCC is the boss, and we have to follow their, their rules. Okay, uh, here's how you get your license. You show up here and also next Saturday, and then you pass the test. Morse code is no, no longer required, but that doesn't mean you can't use it. Many people love Morse code and spend all day operating it. It's kind of a throwback to the past, but it's a cool skill to have, and some people get very good at it and can communicate at 30, 35, or more words per minute. Um, you have to admit, not everybody can do that. This will be real easy. Who regulates and enforces the rules for us? How about FCC? Yeah. ITU is International Telecommunication Union. I mean, these are legitimate organizations, but they're not our boss. Okay. Now we're up to chapter two already. We're going to throw lots of words at you. I mean, if this were a photography class, you'd be learning new words. If this were a music class, you'd learn new words. Well, this is a ham radio class, so we're going to throw lots of words at you. Some of this you've seen before. Some of this may be new. We're going to define a bunch of terms. We typically show a radio wave as being a sine wave. That's mathematically referred to as a sine wave, and it's a good way to visualize a radio wave because it goes from low intensity to high intensity back to low intensity and up to high intensity, and that's kind of how a radio wave works. Now, this is a convenient way to show it. So what are the words we use? Well, from this peak here down to this peak here is referred to as the amplitude of the signal. It may be measured in volts or amps or watts, uh, but it's going to be uh, the maximum. And the higher we draw this, the, uh, the stronger the signal is considered to be. Now, from a given point to the same point one cycle later, is the period, and that's measured in seconds, or fractions of a second. Um, so from here to here is not a cycle, and it's not a period, because here we're on the up-going part of the sine wave, and here we're on the down-going, so we have to find this point here. That's where the cycle really repeats. And so that time is referred to as the period. Now, the number of times that we go through a complete cycle in one period is called the frequency. And it is measured in hertz. Uh, it's a name we give um, to frequency in honor of Heinrich Hertz, an early uh, scientific explorer in radio waves. The abbreviation is capital H, little z. So we may talk about a signal as being so many hertz, tens or hundreds or thousands or millions of hertz. 
Here is a low frequency signal, and you can see there's only a few transitions per second. Uh, here is one that has twice as many uh, cycles in a second. If it's precisely double the frequency of the first one, it's called the second harmonic. This one is called the fundamental. So if this is one megahertz, one million hertz, then this would be two million hertz, and this one would be three million hertz. That would be the third harmonic. Okay? And feel free to jump in with questions. We're going to kind of tear through this stuff unless you tell me otherwise. Okay? We are dealing with electromagnetic waves. And a radio wave or an electromagnetic, an electromagnetic wave consists of an electric field and a magnetic field that increase and de decrease in energy alternately. So we have an electric field that gets stronger and weaker and a magnetic field that gets stronger and weaker and they alternate. And they alternate in the pattern of a sine wave that we, which we just looked at. The waves travel at the speed of light. One thing I will tell you is that all of electronics is metric. Now don't worry about that because we're not dealing with kilograms and uh, kilometers here. Uh, but you'll be pleased to know that a volt is the same whether it's in the US or Russia or South America or Antarctica. The volt, the amp, the ohm, the farad, the uh, Henry, the Hertz, same worldwide. So at least we don't have to worry about additional terms depending on where in the earth you are. Electromagnetic waves, we're used to this expression, 186,300 miles per second. Well, in radio, get used to 300 million meters per second. And that's really close. It's almost exactly 300 million meters per second. And the reason I say that is because we'll be talking about meters in here more than yards or feet. Okay. Um, I showed you that big chart there. That's called the electromagnetic spectrum going all the way from the lowest frequencies to the highest frequencies and the fact that we break it into bands, we break it into chunks and we say this band is set aside for TV broadcasting, this band is set aside for ham radio, this band is set aside for uh, paging and so on. Everything belongs to somebody or it's been assigned to somebody. Um, RF, by the way, that term, you'll see that a lot. It means radio frequency. This slide is a much simplified example of the chart. Uh, very low frequencies, low frequencies, medium frequencies, high frequencies, very high frequencies, ultra high frequencies, super high frequencies, and extremely high frequencies. And we're all dealing with terms of three here. From 3 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz is considered very low frequencies. And then you can see the breaks. 300 kilohertz is the threshold of medium frequencies. 3 megahertz begins the high frequencies. 30 megahertz begins VHF. 300 megahertz begins UHF. 3 gigahertz is super high. 30 is extremely high. And way up here, we have other types of radiation, light and so on. Go ahead. When you want to use a radio, uh, like the ones he showed us, is that a very low frequency? No. Or? Those radios are here. Okay. But you have privileges all over the place. Right. So you can choose to operate a very low frequency, which has its own characteristics. For emergencies, for the jeepers, and for uh, flooding, and who knows what might happen around here. We typically use handheld radios and mobile radios that operate either on VHF or UHF. Uh, two very popular ham bands are the 146 megahertz band and the 450 megahertz band. Um, those are small radios with short antennas and they're good for a very limited distance. But that's okay. If you've got a local emergency, you're not interested in talking to Africa. We have places where you do that. That's right here. Did, um, <coughs> And, well, like pure two meter and uh, 70. Do they ever use, or is anybody that ever uses a super high frequency here? Around here? Yeah. That'd be like a microwave, wouldn't it? There may be some guys experiment, experimenting with microwaves, um, dishes, or. We use it for connecting our repeater sites. Ah, yes. That's what, three gigahertz? Yeah, three gigahertz. Uh, fixed antennas aimed at each other. Uh, very high frequency, well, 
really high frequency radios that link the repeaters to each other. So, yeah, and, and of course, as the technology moves on, there's more and more of that happening. Uh, we've defined this word band. It's a group of frequencies that are uh, uh, collected together for a, a purpose. We talk about the AM radio band or the citizens band band. This is a chart that looks at things a little differently. We're looking at the width of signals. And for example, here we have the AM band. We're looking at a signal at 570 kilohertz, 800 kilohertz, 1,000 kilohertz, 1,310 kilohertz. So this would be what you might see on the AM radio dial if you were to use something like a service monitor or a spectrum analyzer. And you told it, I want to look at everything that's going on between here and here. What you would see is a number of signals from all the different transmitters that are on the air. Each one occupies a little bit of space. So each of these would be considered a separate radio signal. Uh, if we were listening to uh, KCOL, we would have a signal right over here at 600 kilohertz. And if we were listening to KOA, we would have a signal here at 850 kilohertz. Um, if you have a receiver, you tune in a signal by making the receiver sensitive to only that frequency. And that's how you hear that signal and not the ones on either side of it. So in theory, you could be in the middle of nowhere as in South Pacific someplace. And if you had a speedometer, you could see what signal is somebody's, somebody's active on this signal. Sure. So then you could go there and say, hey, I need help, or hey, I need you, you probably wouldn't have such an expensive piece of test gear with you, though. You would probably have a radio that has a uh, display on it that shows you what's going on um, in the band. And you could look for signals to see who's on, sure. Normally you would use the scan out of the field and you'd use a scanner for that function. You a lot of radio. For VHF and UHF, you might use a scanner. Uh huh. But now, South Pacific, you'd probably be on HF. And now, when you were close to a dock, you would use VHF to talk to the harbor master and get a, a location. Um, but for long distances, yeah, you'd want to use HF for that. Another new word, wavelength. A radio wave can be identified two ways. One is the frequency, which we already talked about. How many times does it go through one cycle in a second? Also, what is the length of the wave? So if we take a starting point and we go through a complete cycle and end here, what's that distance? We usually talk about that in terms of meters in ham radio. And that's kind of a throwback uh, to the old days and also the fact that we're metric. You will hear hams talk about frequencies and wavelengths pretty much as if they were interchangeable. I'll meet you on two meters tonight. Two meters, isn't that about six feet? Yeah, yeah, and that's how long the radio wave is. Or you might tell somebody, less likely, that I'll meet you at 146.700 megahertz. That's the frequency. You might remember, if you're old enough, like me, that there used to be big floor model tube type radios that had dials on them where one pointer would show the frequency and the other pointer would show the wavelength. And as you turn the tuning knob, it would point to both. So you could tune in a radio station at 1,000 kilohertz or 300 meters. And stations would identify themselves both ways. This goes way back. Anyway, those two things are interchangeable and pretty much these days, you, if somebody says, I'm going to be on 70 centimeters, you know he's talking about the 450 megahertz band. This is just something that you'll learn. Go ahead. Quite a while ago, there was a band um, in the vicinity of 220 megahertz. Still is. It, still in use? Mm -hmm. But le yeah. much less popular. Becoming more popular, actually. Uh, the 220 band was uh, reallocated to UPS many years ago to build a special communication systems for them, which I guess has now been abandoned. But there's a chunk of the 2 meter ham band that is no longer there for hams. The remainder of the 220 megahertz band is still there. The reason it's not as popular is because for many years hams used repurposed communications gear from Motorola and GE professional taxi radios, police radios, fire radios that were no longer used and could be converted to the ham band by moving them a little bit in frequency. Well, there never was a commercial two-way band at 220 megahertz before this ACSB stuff came along. 
Uh, so the only way you'll get a 220 megahertz radio is to buy one from a manufacturer, typically a Japanese manufacturer. And uh, on, on the other hand, it's a nice quiet band. You can get on and not have to put up with a whole lot of other <laughs> people talking. It's, so uh, yeah, that's true. But short talk distance. I mean, short distance. Hard to do without a radio. At that frequency, you can talk to the horizon. Yeah. We, we do have a 220 repeater. Well, there you go. And we'd love to have you on it. Oh, I, I, we have, we've got a repeater up, don't we? The what, huh? We've got a 220 repeater up, don't we? That's what you're saying. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm happy. The one that actually works is the one that's on Mach, the other one's got an antenna problem that's on. Okay. Is that, a, is that on Mark? No, it's on Mark. Oh, it's on Mark. But it has an antenna problem. But yes, NCAR has a repeater. It's an open to anybody. <laughs> Questions? Let's see if we can get through these. All right. What's the name for the distance a radio wave travels in one cycle? Right. How fast does a radio wave travel through free space? In other words, through a vacuum? It slows down when it goes through something else, by the way. A radio wave going down a coaxial cable is slowed down considerably. It may have a 66% velocity factor, as it's called. So that's why we throw in this word free space or vacuum. How does the wavelength of a radio wave relate to its frequency? If the wavelengths gets shorter, we're going to have more, more of them in one second's time, right? So wavelength and frequency go in opposite directions. Um, we didn't talk about this, so let's talk about it right now. If you multiply the wavelength, symbol lambda, Greek letter, times the frequency, you get the speed of light. Now, the speed of light is how much? Meters per second. So obviously from this formula we can create two more. Wavelength is going to equal what? And F is going to be So to convert one to another is real simple. You divide it by 300 or you divide it into 300 million. So um, what we can also do is if we assume that frequency will always be in megahertz, if we make that assumption, we can then get rid of six zeros. So now the relationship is real simple. It's, it's 300, converts wavelength in meters to frequency in megahertz. That's why I said before on the old-fashioned radio, if the pointer is pointing at 1,000 kilohertz on your radio dial, that's one megahertz, the other pointer will be pointing at 300 meters because that's, that's the, the formula. So as you turn the radio to a higher frequency, the meters will go down. And as you go to a lower frequency, the meters will go up. And it's a direct um, relationship. Can you show us a practical example using actual wavelength? You will. Or like, let's say, 70 centimeters? You will. OK. What's the frequency at 70 centimeters? Anybody got a calculator? 400. Yeah, 400 and something. So the 70 centimeter band is 400 and something megahertz. 70 centimeters. 428 is what that one comes up to. OK. 70 centimeters is 0.7 meters. We will have examples of this because the test has questions on this. Oh, how do we identify the different bands? We talk about it in terms of wavelength. Mostly you'll hear Ham say, I'll be on 40 meters tonight, or gosh, 20 meters was really poor this weekend. I didn't talk to anybody. Or uh, do you hear those guys talking on 75 meters this morning? Well, what they meant was 7 megahertz for 40 meters, 14 megahertz for 20 meters. Uh, 3.5 megahertz for, or 4 megahertz almost for 75 meters. Um, it's just that a, 
an expression that's been carried along for many years and it's likely to stay that way. How about VHF? Remember the threes? Which one was VHF? There's a ham band at 50 megahertz, we call that VHF. There's a ham band at 150 megahertz, that's still VHF. There's a ham band at 450 megahertz that we call UHF. So, and all you can really do is kind of memorize that chart. After a while you get really used to what these numbers and what they mean. How about UHF? Same question. If you remember that the 450 megahertz ham band is a UHF band. Oop, what was I pointing at before? Kilohertz. I was at kilohertz since, ah, uh, good lesson. <laughs> Read the entire answer. What's, what about HF? Three to 30 megahertz. Um, you can think of HF as short wave. Where do you go to tune in short wave stations? You know, 5, 10, 15 megahertz, right in there. What's the velocity of a radio wave in free space? Yep. Now this one, you, you might vote for that one, but it says miles per hour. And the speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. Heck, Joe's got a car that'll do that fast. <laughs> it's my Mustang. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know when I see the reflection from that laser pointer. So. Okay. What's the unit of frequency? Hertz. Yeah. Those are other legitimate units, but they're not the unit for frequency. What does RF mean? Radio frequency. Okay. This presentation was brought to you by the Northern Colorado Amateur Radio Club. For more information, visit our website, ncarc.net. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.